you know, I had a real rough time in school with ADD, and I have a PhD, I earned a PhD, but tough to pay attention, biology, geology, physics, chemistry, really tough for me. Only one thing grabbed my attention, and it's that. It's that planet called Earth, but in this picture right here, you see that Earth is mostly water. That's the Pacific. 70% of Earth is covered with water, and you could say, hey, I know planet Earth, I live here. You don't know Earth. You don't know this planet, because most of it's covered with that. Average depth, two miles, and when you go outside and look up at the, like the Empire State Building, Chrysler Building, the average depth of the ocean is 15 of those on top of one another. We've explored about 5% of what's in that water. Explored, meaning for the first time, go peek and see what's there. So what I want to do today is I want to I show you some things about this planet, about the oceans. I want to take you from some shallow water down to the deep water, and hopefully, like me, you'll see some things that get you hooked on exploring planet Earth. You know things like corals. You've seen plenty of corals. Those of you that have been to the beach, snorkel, you know corals are an amazing place to go, full of life. Uh, some big animals, small animals, some nice, some dangerous sharks, whales, all that stuff. They need to be protected from humanity, great places. But what you probably don't know about is in the deep ocean, the very deep part of the ocean, we have volcanic eruptions. Most volcanoes on Earth are at the bottom of the sea, more than 80%. And we actually have fire, fire deep inside the ocean, going on right now, all over the world, in the Pacific, the Atlantic, the Indian Ocean. In this place, the ocean floor, the rocks actually turn to liquid. So you actually have waves in the ocean floor. You'd say nothing could live there, but when we look in detail, even there, even in the deepest, darkest places on Earth, we find life, which tells us that life really wants to happen. So pretty amazing stuff. Every time we go to the bottom of the sea, we explore with our submarines, with our robots, we see something that's, that's usually surprising. Sometimes it's startling and sometimes revolutionary. You see that puddle of water sitting there. And all around the water, there's a little cliff, there's a little white sandy beach. Uh, we'll get closer to it. You see the beach a little bit better, some of the waves in that water down there. The thing that's special about this water is that it's at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. So you're sitting inside a submarine, looking out the window at a, at a little pond of water beneath the sea. You know, we see ponds, we see lakes, we see rivers. In fact, right here is a river at the bottom of the ocean going from the lower left to the upper right. Water's actually flowing through there. Okay, this totally blew our minds that how can you have this at the, you're in the ocean looking at more water at the, and there's animals that only live in that water. So, you know, the bottom of the ocean, I, I love this map because it shows in the middle of the ocean there's a mountain range. That mountain range is the greatest mountain range on earth, it's called the Mid-Ocean Ridge. 50,000 miles long and we've hardly had a peek at it. You know, hardly had a peek at it. We find valleys, many, many thousands of valleys, larger, wider, deeper than the Grand Canyon. We find, as I said, underwater lakes, rivers, waterfalls. The largest waterfall on the planet is actually under the ocean up near Iceland. All that stuff in, the, in that 5% that we've explored. So, you know, the deal about the ocean is that to explore it, you've got to have technology. Not only technology, but it's not just Dave Gallo or one person exploring, it's a team of people. You've got to have the talent, you've got to have the team, you've got to have the technology. And in this case, it's our, it's our ship Atlantis and the submarine Elvin. Now inside that submarine, this is an Elvin launch, there's three people. They're being wheeled out onto deck. There's 47 other people, the teamwork, on that ship making sure that these people are okay. Everybody in that submarine is thinking one thing right now, should I have gone to the bathroom one more time? <laughs> because it's like, you're in there for 10 hours. 10 hours in that little sphere, three of you together, and nobody is going to be around you. You go into the water, and once you hit the water, it's amazing. That, there's a lovely color blue that penetrates right inside you. You don't hear the surface ship anymore. You hear that pinging of a sonar. If you've got an iPhone, you've got sonar on there. It's that same pinging that goes down to the bottom and comes back up. Divers check out the sub to make sure the outside's okay, and then they say, go and down you go to the bottom of the ocean, and it's an amazing trip. So for two and a half hours, you sink down to the bottom, and, and two hours of it's totally pitch black. And now we thought nothing could live inside that world at the bottom of the ocean, and when we look, we find some amazing things. All the way down, we call it the midwater, from the top of the ocean down to the bottom, we find life. Whenever we stop and look, we find life. I'm gonna show you some jellies here, because they are absolutely well, some of the coolest creatures on Earth. Every different, look at that thing, just flailing his arms around it. That's like a little lobster. That one's like all these animals with their mouths going hooked together. They're colonial animals. Some animals are tiny. Some can be longer than the stage. Just amazing animals. And you can't collect them with a net. We have to go actually there with our cameras and take a look at them. So every time we go, new species of life, the ocean's full of life. 
And at the deepest part of the ocean, when we go to that mountain range, we find hot springs. Now, we were sure, because this is poisonous water, because it's so deep it would crush the Titanic the same way you could crush an empty cup inside your hand. We were sure there'd be no life there at all. Instead, we find more life and diversity and density than the tropical rainforest. So in one instance, in one peek out the window of the sub, we discover something that revolutionizes the way we think about life on Earth, and that is you don't always have to have sunlight to get life going. There's big animals down there, too, some that look familiar. That guy's called Dumbo. I love him. <laughs> Dumbo's great. This guy, oh, man, I wish I had more footage of this. We're trying to get an expedition together to go look at this, and maybe in a year we'll have that. And go online and look. Vampirotuthis infernalis, the vampire squid, incredibly cool. In the darkness of the deep sea, he's got glowing tentacles. So if I'm coming at you like him, I put my arms out in the darkness so that all you see are these little glowing things over here. In the meantime, I'm coming at you. When he wants to escape, he's got these glowing pods on his butt that look like eyes. He's got glowing eyes on his butt, man. How cool is that? It's just an amazing, amazing animal. <laughs> Vampire squid, because when it gets protective, it pulls this black cape over his whole body, curls up into a ball. Outrageous animal. And then, you know, this, this ship, the Ship of Dreams, 100 years ago, this coming April, this ship was supposed to show up in New York. It's Titanic. And I let Cole led an expedition out there last year. We are learning so much about that ship. You know, Titanic's an interesting place from biology because animals are moving in to live on Titanic. Microbes are actually eating the hull of Titanic. That's where Jack was king of the world, right there on the bow of Titanic. So we're doing real good. And what's exciting me is that someday we're making a virtual Titanic so you can sit there at home with your joystick and your headset on and you can actually explore Titanic for, for yourself. That's what we want to do, make these virtual worlds. So it's not Dave Gallo or someone else exploring the world. It's you. You explore it for yourself. So here's the bottom line. You know, the oceans are un unexplored. And, and I can't begin to tell you how important that is, because they're important to us. Seven billion people live on this planet. And all of us are impacted by the sea, because the oceans, they, they control the air you breathe, the water you drink, the food you eat. All those are controlled in some way by the ocean. And this is a thing that we don't even, haven't even explored 5%. The thing I want you to leave you with is that in that 5%, I showed you some cool stuff. There's a lot more cool stuff. Every dive that we go out in the ocean, we find something more new, something new about the sea. So what's that other 95%? Did we get the exciting stuff, or is there more out there? And, and I'm here to tell you that the ocean's full of surprises. There's a quote I love by Marcel Proust. The true voyage of exploration is not so much in seeking new landscapes, which we do, but in having new eyes. And so I'm hoping today, by showing you some of this, it's given you some new eyes about this planet. And for the first time, I want you to think about it differently. Thank you very much. Thank you.